Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite Gimp with a Limp, and I'm here with a quick one for you. This one is just another Kickstarter worth checking out. This is by our old pals over there at Compass Games, and it is Oceans of Fire that just launched on Kickstarter a couple days ago, and they're running a, a shorter one. I hate it when they do this. Uh, so many of the companies are moving into this direction. I get it because it's not just them. Uh, Kickstarters, they make all their money in the first couple of days and the last couple of days. So you know, I get why they, you're like, oh, why have it 30 days? Uh, but I hate, uh, I hate shorter ones. I always like the long ones. That's me personally. Anyway, this one is a strategic level game uh, set in the Pacific theater of World War II. Uh, we're not going to watch the video. By all means, uh, go check out the video yourself. But it is basically uh, an unboxing of all the stuff that comes in the game. And we're going to go over the components as we kind of scroll down through it anyway. So I'm not going to waste time just watching through it. But like I said, by all means, uh, check out the video here where they show the components, the the player aids, the tokens, the, the maps, all that good stuff. Uh, this one is a rather large game. Uh, you can tell that by their pricing. Uh, Compass, uh, they, they tend to have pretty decent prices. So uh, some of their smaller games, right? So things like um, uh, American Tank Ace, right? That doesn't have a huge amount of components in it. Love the game. Remember, it was one of my top fives. Really cool game, but it didn't have a huge amount of components. And I think they kickstarted that one. It was like 60, if I remember right, somewhere around there, 60, 70, something in that ballpark. Uh, this one's 90. This one uh, obviously is going to have a lot more in the box than one of those others. And I think this, uh, he mentioned something like 20 player aids, a couple of maps, a bunch of counters. So huge amount of stuff. Uh, you can do bundles if you want to. So 90 is for the game plus shipping, all right? Plus shipping, it's not just 90. And then there's packs. So add-on games, other Compass games that you want to get. Uh, they don't have um, different pledge levels for them. And when Compass does a Kickstarter, it's the game. That's it. That's what you're backing. Personally, I like it that way. I think it's, it's so much easier to keep track of what you're getting versus uh, this level, this all in, this, no, this is the premium all in, deluxe all in, and this is the platinum. No, screw that. This is easy. Back the game or don't back the game. Um, one to three players, 14 up, blah, blah, blah. It uh, says complexity 7 out of 10, so I would expect it to be pretty, pretty depthy, right? Uh, it's Pacific games, so Pacific games tend to have a lot more complexity to them, and solitaire ability is pretty high. Shows that it is an area movement strategic simulation of the Pacific theater of operations in World War II. Players command the Japanese, American, and British Commonwealth naval, air, and ground forces that fought in the Pacific uh, Southeast Asia. The Netherlands forces that fought in the Dutch East Indies and the Chinese forces that fought in Burma are also included. So cool, good stuff. Uh, map runs from India to the west coast of the US, which is generally what you get with Pacific games. And from the Aleutians to Australia, game is designed for two to three players, but can be solitaire as well. We're going to have one big map in two sheets. So covering that area that they were talking about there, right? But it's going to be in two uh, paper maps. Uh, two counter sheets of that size, naval units, and four counter sheets, so six counter sheets total. Uh, the naval units going to be one size and ground units are going to be another. And you do tend to see that naval units tend to be rectangular for the ships and uh, square for the ground units and air marker uh, air units markers uh, 1080 wow a lot of counters in this game 67 cards rule book playbook scenario book the naval battle board eight eight player aids uh, cards two sets of four each for the allied Japanese Three reinforcements cards, three force pull cards, three carrier air displays, one VP and resource card, one unit key card, uh, one expanded sequence of play, and six 10 sided dice. Well, I like to hear, hear that 10 sided dice. Uh, so, a lot of stuff. That's what I was saying. You can tell with the price. The $90 that there's a larger amount of stuff in this box. Uh, and they definitely have a chalk pool. Just the, the buttload of paper that's in there. Thousand counters, man. Yeah, thousand counters, two maps, and player aids coming out your ass. 
Uh, this says for our gameplay, naval units are going to range from the mighty capital ships, aircraft carriers, battleships, to their sporting uh, cruisers and light cruisers. Submarines, transports are also present with each uh, counter abstractly representing many of these smaller ship types. There are two types of air units, carrier air and land-based, also pretty dominant in the Pacific type games. Uh, the standard ground unit is a division, such as U.S. Marine Corps Division, and a few brigades, including the Japanese Special Naval Landing Forces, as an optional rule. Uh, admirals and generals, such as Admiral Nagamo and General Vandergrit, can enter play to uh, lead one place uh, one's forces. Yeah, cool stuff. Each turn encompasses six months of actual time divided into uh, tour rounds. Hmm. Each round, the Japanese, American, and Commonwealth players each take an impulse. Cool stuff. Uh, this is showing, you know, some pictures of the map, some units that are on there. And here we've got our sequence of play. Uh, it seems like it's got a lot of stuff going on here. It talks about oil reserve points, which uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes on with Japanese oil for the Pacific War. I'm not going to get into all of it. You know, go research your history. Uh, to understand, but that was a, a big thing. So that is abstracted into the game. It says rounds four times in the order listed. So I'm guessing that means we're going to go through this long list here uh, four times. Not going to go through the, the whole thing here because that'll take us a little bit, but it uh, looks like they've got a fair amount of stuff going on. So it's going to be pretty in depth. So that well, seven on that complexity uh, is making sense. Seems like F is our key thing. Activate units there. Resolve interrupted. Resolve any initiated strategic warfare. Check a reestablishment of supply. Remove all. Oh, wow. This, this is going to be deep. This is going to be a deep game. Uh, remove relocating base markers. Remove control changing markers. Adjust CVA basing. Uh, there's, yeah, there's a lot going on with this one. I would definitely recommend uh, only get this if you are okay with those complex games, right? If you don't like the deep ones, you don't like the Chrome, you don't like the ones you really got to, you know, sink your teeth into, uh, this might be one that uh, you're going to pass on. Me, I, I love Pacific games. I, I love uh, the Pacific. It's got the Marines in it. It's got naval uh, aircraft and warfare that was fought there. It's just so cool that up my alley. I love that stuff. It's my favorite theater, so I'm always getting these games, even though they're so damn hard to play. Uh, it looks like we got some strategic warfare, too, with the B-29s uh, and SS units. SS. Strategic? Has to be strategic. They're, I don't think there are SS in the Pacific, but not like that type of SS. And it shows for our add-ons. This is what I was meaning. It's, uh, other games. So you get like... Uh, uh, there are Paper Wars games, Pacific Tide, The War, there's The War, Europe, and like The War of the Pacific. So <laughs> if you want to get into a bunch of Pacific level games, you can get into that. So that's it. That is all. It doesn't say anything about our potential shipping. Shipping isn't usually too bad. Compass is usually pretty good as far as shipping. Uh, my guess with a game this weighty, probably say at least 25. I would estimate there. Uh, as far as shipping might be a touch above, might be a touch under, uh, but at least 25, not a whole lot of backers yet on this one. I don't think they got the word out as much as they probably, uh, should have, but I'm trying to help them out, get the, the word out here, let people know about it. If you were into Pacific, uh, games, like your war games, definitely check this one out. I like the look of the map and I know I pulled it up somewhere. Oh, here is uh, an example of it. This isn't the whole map. I think this is one of the map sheets. So like I was saying, let's uh, scroll it in a little bit here so we can have a better look. How it goes from India here all the way to the West Coast. And I think, I think for this, this might ease up play a little bit because the games that you see that are set in the Pacific that have uh, hex-based movement, you know, uh, hex encounter type stuff can get very bogged down in the minutia because it's so hard to abstract the the distances, right? Uh, the 
it has to be abstracted to this odd degree because the Pacific is so large and then you're trying to represent these tiny islands that are extremely important, but in the, the size of things, they'd be a tiny speck on there, but you know, in the game, they're taking up two or three hexes because they have to, because they're important. It's, it gets weird. So I'm thinking that them going area-based can maybe help them out as far as the, the gameplay is concerned, especially when it comes to, to movement. It'll be easier to abstract area-based sections versus something like Hex Encounter, where they have to have the hexes roughly the same degree. You know, this is a 50 meter hex or 100 meter hex or whatever it is. And this looks like the areas are all just different shapes and sizes according to whatever they have going on. So you can kind of, you know, adjust it out as they need. Uh, maps look good. From what I can see, I like the look of the counters. Uh, like I said, that's in the uh, the video that they showed early on here. Definitely check that out because the components look standard. You know, Compass Game stuff. All their uh, all their uh, components have always been good quality. I've never had a problem with their stuff as far as that goes. So I'm not anticipating anything here. Uh, yeah, definitely one worth checking out. If you're in the Pacific theaters, make sure you check it out. Oceans of Fire by Compass Games. You got nine days as of the time of filming, so it'll probably be eight days by the time I get this video up. So we'll see. Hopefully I can get this one up quick, let people know about it. But you'll have at least a week after I get this uh, posted to go check it out. All right, that's going to be it for me. You guys take care. I'll catch you in the next one.